language that he used was offensive on every level. Yeah, just horrific comments were made at a Matthews Board of Commissioners meeting that happened Monday night. Now, Queen City News has confirmed other municipalities have experienced the same so-called Zoom bombing. So that's where people use vulgar, racist, and then hateful speech to disrupt an online meeting. Tonight, we spoke with a mayor on the West Coast who experienced the same thing and says the law isn't keeping up with technology with the pornography and the hookup culture. It's language that caused an elected official to walk out of a board of commissioners meeting in Matthews when someone or perhaps something spewed offensive, vulgar and hateful language during the public comment period. I find myself standing with the anti-Semites, with people that most of you would refer to as neo-Nazis. Much of it was too repulsive for us to air. I was sick and disgusted. I mean, I, I, I felt sick to my stomach. I couldn't believe it at first. The audio from Monday night's Town of Matthews meeting. Hello. Can, can everyone hear me? Sounded eerily similar to comments made in a city council meeting on the West Coast. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Beaverton, Oregon officials believe AI was the culprit. It's happened to a few other cities in Oregon. But it was after it happened to us, and now it sounds like it's happening in other parts of the country. And so I do think there needs to be some intentional conversations around the law, because even if it is AI, our city attorney is still advising us that we have to let it continue. With kids in the audience, Beaverton Mayor Lacey Beatty cleared the chamber and had to listen to the rants herself until their allotted time was up. She believes laws haven't kept up with technology, and this experience has the attention of mayors across the U.S. I think the way to address this and fix it is a way for us to detect if it's AI and to have a law that says if it's AI, you don't have to continue to listen. Detecting AI or deepfakes has proven to be an imperfect process, though. In the case in Matthews, an AI detector determined there was a 97 percent chance the voice was AI. But it also said there was a 78 percent chance my voice was AI. It's a problem that is going to have wide ranging uh, implications or ramifications. And um, there isn't an easy, straightforward solution to deal with it. Some have suggested similar to the law, digital forensics have trailed the technology and could be problematic for police and prosecutors as well. You know, defendants that have been accused of wrongdoing and are in court, there's an audio or video clip presented. People are just going to say, no, it's a deep fake. Everyone we spoke to acknowledged that artificial intelligence has brought positive changes to our lives, but added it has also created new challenges. The Matthews communications officer tells us that they do not plan to investigate if the disruptors in their meeting were real people or AI bots. Hmm?